Hello, welcome to module two of uh, NPTEL NOC on introductory course on point set topology part two. So today we will take the topic of differentiation on Banach spaces. So many things run parallel to what we do in calculus of variable, one variable calculus or two variable calculus and so on. Actually, you will see that it is copied one variable calculus, but the things have to be put in a proper perspective. Okay. So start with two Banach spaces. One can possibly do many things with uh, just normal spaces also. But we will concentrate only on Banach spaces because our idea of this presentation of these things is not to do the entire thing in a very general setup, but to cover the implicit function theorem and inverse function theorem for uh, Banach spaces as a sample, as a sample of application of topological methods. Okay, so that's why we will concentrate only on Banach spaces. Take a subset U contained inside V, okay, an open subset around a point X0 inside. Okay, V is a vector space, okay, V is a nonlinear space, so there is uh, open subset system makes sense because we are using the norm to induce a metric to induce a topology. Okay, start with an open subset U around a point. A function defined on this open set into another Banach space is said to be differentiable at a at point X0 if there is a continuous linear map from T, uh, T from V to W such that this X is, this limit X is equal to 0. What is this? It is f of x0 plus h minus f x0 divided by the norm h. I can't divide by h. <laughs> so h is a vector inside uh, this norm in space v. Okay. Therefore, I can't do just this limit, but I have to do it by subtracting th, where t is a linear map, which is going to be the derivative. And then I can divide by norm h. This limit as h tends to 0, which is the same thing as saying norm h tends to 0, this limit must exist. So, where is the limit existing? What is this one? f and you know f is taking values into w. T of t is also from v to w, so t of h is also inside w. So all this numerator is taking value inside w, is a vector inside w. Okay, so divided by norm h, of course, that is just a scalar, so it's a vector inside w. This limit must exist. So, the important point here is that we must have a continuous linear map T. This is the part of the definition. Okay, I want to caution you that there are slightly varying definitions you know, weaker or stronger and so on. There are different definitions possible. And then they will make under this condition, this will be equal to that one, that will be equal to this one and so on. We are not going to study all that in this course. Okay. So let us take this definition, namely, there must be a linear map which is bounded, that is continuous linear map from T to V, which satisfies this. No, this equation limit of f of x naught plus h minus fx minus th whole thing divided by norm h this limit must be zero okay as soon as such a 
t exists okay it has to be unique you can't have two different linear maps t1 and t2 having satisfying the same property this is an easy consequence of just similar to what we do in a real analysis or any any other different you know uh, multivariate calculus and so on okay uniqueness is not a difficult thing so that unity is called the derivative of f at the point x not and i am using the same notation gf of x not standard notation the only thing is you might not have called the setting as a fresh derivative we are going to call it as fresh derivative okay this fresh who started with banach space uh, uh, calculus okay fresh derivative of f at the point x not if f is differentiable at each point x inside an open set then we say f is differentiable on the open set t further if the function which assigns to each point u its derivative remember derivative is a bounded linear map right t is bounded from v to w so it is taking values inside b v w if this function for each x here inside u you take dfx that will be denoted by df if this itself is continuous then we say that f is continuously differentiable on u or we can say it's a class c1 okay there are ways of making class c2 definition c3 and so on so we will stop here only class c1 here okay so if you go back the very first thing you do is the so called increment theorem for differentiable functions or function which has a derivative at a single point rewriting this uh, this equation you know as uh, what is it clearing the denominator reinterpret it that's called increment theorem same thing is true here also namely f of x not plus h minus f x not minus t of h not is equal to this norm h as one on the other side i am writing that as the remainder r of x not depending upon h it depends upon x not as well as h okay so you can write it as f of x not plus h is f x not plus d f x not h plus some error term so this is called the increment theorem or the first approximation linear approximation to f okay if we increase the value of x not by h the increment is roughly d f x not of h you can ignore this one you can ignore the last term that is the whole idea why why why, why, why should you ignore this one or why what i mean what makes you ignore this one it is not always possible but because of this definition what we have is if you divide this by h then take the limit it is zero so remainder after the first term here has the property divide by norm h and take the limit it is zero so this is called increment theorem okay exactly as in the case of one variable calculus here okay the following statements are all easy to check exactly as in the case of one variable calculus okay every constant function is differentiable everywhere everywhere means what on the whole of v on the whole wherever they are different okay and its derivatives are always zero the derivative at all the points is zero for a constant function for for every vector v belonging to v translation function see on a vector space you have this u going to u plus v where v is fixed it's a translation functor i have written t upper v by u okay maybe i will forget to write this notation 
every time. The translation function is very easy to remember. This is differentiable everywhere, and its derivative is the identity function. Okay, remember, the translation is from V to V. So the derivative will be also from V to V. It will be linear map. It is a continuous linear map. In this case, is identity of V. All that you have to check is, you know, go back this definition. F of X naught plus H minus F X naught will be what now? T V of this one will be adding V. Then again, adding V here, V V cancels off. This is just thing. It's just like X naught plus H minus X naught. Okay, so what should I take? T take a identity map. Then this numerator itself will be identically zero. There is no need to divide by norm h and so on. So it will be always true. That's all. So the translation maps adding a constant. You know this is a rule. You can di di differentiate this function. You going to use identity. Right, so identity map derivatives identity that v is a constant, so it goes away. So that's another way of looking at it. Every bounded linear map is also differentiable. Here, one lucky thing is that we don't have to make a further assumptions. Start the linear map, you don't know that it is continuous, so you have to make the assumption. You know, you have to put that extra condition, continuity. Once it's continuous, it is differentiable. And its derivative is again the same function t at all the points x inside. This is again st standard uh, result inside Rn. R into Rn, if you have linear map, you know that its derivative is the linear map itself. Okay. You can directly verify it by taking t itself as uh, in the in the slot in the third slot here is t of x naught plus h minus t of x naught minus t h is zero so that will give you that t itself is the derivative of t okay and then this standard uh, uh, addition rule and scalar multiplication rule if f and g are differentiable at x naught Alpha beta scalars, alpha f plus beta g is differentiable at x naught. Okay, indeed, if alpha beta from u to k are scalar functions which are differentiable at x naught, then this alpha times f, this is not a composition, this is this is just multiplication, right? The scalar multiplication. So derivative of alpha f makes sense. It will be differentiable. Similarly, beta g makes sense. The sum makes sense. So this will be also differentiable to x naught. Okay. Of course, you have to use Leibniz rule here. Okay. So if f is differentiable to x naught, then it is continuous at x naught. Same, same proof as in the case of one variable. This is a one variable calculus after all. Okay. The logic, the, the definition, the, you can just look at uh, the increment theorem here. Okay. You can show that if f is differentiable, this rule is true. Now you can show that f is continuous also. Okay. So, so far, Except in the definition, I have started the continuous linear map. This is just like one variable calculus. In the in the one variable calculus, you are just a real number. But if you think carefully, if you know that you have you must have done it already, a real number uh, is actually a, represents a linear map from R to R. Okay, the namely multiplication by that number. So. There is so far there is no difference at all. So it may be noted that if f is differentiable to x naught, then all this directional derivative. Sorry, so let me let me call this one. Okay, I'm jumping here. All the directional derivatives are also 
will also exist is what I wanted to say. So let us know what is the meaning of directional derivative. Again, it is the same thing as in the uh, multivariate calculus. Starting with two uh, Banach spaces V and W, again, open subset U of the domain, X not belonging to U. Now you take any vector, preferably a non-zero vector. Even vector zero is also valid. Okay, take any non-zero vector. Okay, let f from u to v, uh, w be any function. Then the directional derivative dv dv of f at x naught. So this is derivative of f in the direction of v at the point x naught. Okay, e is defined as follows. Okay, namely, it is a vector w inside w such that in this third slot, whatever your t of h you are writing, instead of this one now, t of w, multiplication by t here, or you know, the vector w is just the direction that. So f of x naught plus t, x naught plus t times v now, we not arbitrary h minus f of x naught minus t of w this entire thing is now function of a one variable t real variable so you are dividing it by t itself okay no norm so see f x naught is fixed v is fixed w is fixed so it is function of real variable one variable this function must be this limit must be zero in other words, if you just look at f of x naught plus t times v, this function must be differentiable. Okay, as a function of t. Okay, and its derivative is w. That's called directional derivative. Exactly same definition as in the case of usual multivariable calculus. Okay, and you can immediately verify that all the directional derivatives will exist as soon as the derivative at x naught exists. So often one calls the other derivative which you have defined as total derivative. Okay, these are direction derivatives, these are total derivatives. You can talk about partial derivatives, but then you have to fix up coordinates. In Banach spaces, coordinate fixing is, is something very fishy. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So let V and W be any two non-linear spaces. A continuous linear map T from V to W is said to be an isomorphism if it is invertible as a function and the inverse is also continuous. Okay. So here I have taken this definition for all norm linear spaces also. Okay. The remark here is that the inverse of a linear function is automatically linear. This is elementary algebra on any vector space. Okay. If you have a continuous in a bijection, which is, sorry, which you have just a bijection, which is linear, then the inverse is automatically linear. That is not a problem. But inverse may not be continuous. This is what we have been uh, telling. Even if it's a, if it's a bijection, even if it's a bijection, it continues, the inverse may not be continuous. So we have to mention it separately. Okay. In the above situation, some authors simply call T an invertible operator. This is another name. They do not isomorphism, inverse is, inverse is here, continuous, etc. They will say just say invertible operator. So I will also use that term now. Okay. If V and W are Banach spaces, then for any invertible continuous linear transformation t from v to w 
automatically t inverse will be continuous okay see remember invertible just for me it does not mean that it is continuous so i want to be very careful invertible operator when you say by convention uh, inverse is also continuous a linear map may be invertible okay it has an inverse but it may not be continuous that is why i am making this caution but if v and w are banach spaces no problem automatically the inverse will be continuous okay but this one needs a deeper theorem there namely what is called as open mapping theorem okay we are not going into that deep into function analysis not a course on function analysis but i am just mentioning this i will never use this property though okay i will never use it because I, we are not going to prove in inverse i am just mentioning it as a information that's all okay if t is an isomorphism from definition that we have taken applied to both t and t inverse we get two constant this right hand side constant says t is continuous right norm of t is less than or lambda x similarly i must have other way around also for t inverse which will give you a lambda prime on this side lambda prime of norm x is less than or equal to norm of tx which you can write it as you know no norm of t inverse of of x is less than or equal lambda time lambda prime times norm of uh, x also you can write similar way so both sides you get a constant here remember this was the definition of that two functions are similar two linear transformations are similar okay so this is what we had so t itself is a similarity here because it is similar to the identity map it is not identity map but it is similar to the identity map so t from v to w is called a similarity of two normal spaces so that thing happen okay we have studied similarities in the in the part 1 no here is a theorem that i need to use so go through this carefully ha huh? start with two banach spaces put a equal to a v w a is a short form here when v and w are understood what is this a v w it is all set of all similarities from t v to w okay not all transformation but only similarities consider the function eta from a to b w v the other way around from w to v okay defined by eta of t equal to t inverse so each element here is invertible so i can take the inverse again i am getting inside a v w so this eta is actually lands you from a to a w v okay not matter so it is inside b v w b w v which is a banach space okay so let a b then sorry then a is an open subset of this b v w and eta is differentiable on the entire of a okay so i am stating a non trivial thing here first of all i say that this subset is an open subset of b v w remember b v w itself is a banach space okay and eta is differentiable on a further the derivative d eta which is a map from a into b w v okay because eta itself is a map into b w v this derivative is also taking values there okay 
for each point a you have a, a linear map given by d eta of d eta operating at a t will be a linear map operating on s okay this is nothing but you know pre composing with t inverse and then post composing with t inverse and taking the minus so it's a complicated uh, derivative here okay for every s belong to b v w start with for every s s is not invertible s is arbitrary element okay arbitrary element of trans linear uh, see a is a subset of this right and i am claiming a is an open subset on an open subset you have a function you can talk about whether it differentiable the statement is that that is differentiable and its derivative is this one okay so that is statement so let us see the proof is not all that difficult at all first of all what may happen is this a is empty what is the meaning of that there may not be any similarities between v and w okay so if you want to say anything there is no statement about this being an empty here but on no empty space whatever i have made they are vacuously true so there is nothing no logical difficult difficulty here but you want to prove something you should assume a is non empty that's all otherwise you don't have to prove anything all right so assume a is non empty then we can follow what is the meaning of a is non empty there is some similarity which means v and w are similar already that is a non trivial assumption okay the above theorem implies in particular that a is continuous because we have already remarked that any function which is differentiable at a point is continuous at that point so we are going to prove that d this eta is differentiable on the whole of a therefore it is continuous on the whole of a this is not stated here but it is an easy consequence of that so we will use that also okay okay towards the proof of that a is an open subset in the last lecture we have already made the preparation for this so let us see how take a point t inside a what is it it is a similarity from v to w okay so it has some norm okay i am taking k equal to norm of t inverse okay then i am claiming that the ball of radius 1 by k around t is contained inside a t is arbitrary such a ball is contained inside a this 1 by k is obviously you know, is non zero right so that will show that a is open for each point you have a ball open ball contained inside uh, that uh, set a so a is open so how to show this so this is what we want to claim right so let s belong into b v w Okay, this ball is taking place where inside B V W, right? A is subset of B V W. Is such that norm of S is less than one by k. Then we know that T inverse composite S is less than or equal to norm of T inverse into norm of S is less than one, right? That is the whole idea why I took norm of this. Uh, k equal to t inverse norm of t inverse okay t inverse norm of t inverse t inverse will cancel out so it's less than 1 therefore by lemma that we have proved you know that we have stated and indicated the proof also lemma 1.63 follows that identity plus t inverse of s is invertible 
to side dt minus, you can take minus s here or you can put, you, this will become plus. Identity dt by t inverse of s is invertible. Okay? Because norm of this one is less than 1. But then you can write t plus s as t composite identity, that is t plus t, t cancel, t and t inverse cancel away s. Okay. So this is t is invertible, t is a similarity, this is invertible, so the composite is invertible. So t plus s is an element of A. Okay. So these are the points inside the inside this box. Every element here looks like t plus s, where norm of s is less than by k. That is the ball. So the whole ball is contained inside A. That's all. We have proved that A is open. All right. Now we want to show the derivative. Okay. Fixity, I want to show that D is that eta is differentiable at T. Okay. The map S going to T inverse composite S composite t inverse again it's a bounded linear operator why s is the variable here i am taking the right composition in the left composition by some other bounded linear operator so exactly t inverse on both sides now okay so we have seen that composing left or right is again a bounded linear transformation you have twice what are they they are actually LT inverse and RT inverse. So this map S going to T inverse, ST inverse is nothing but I have a short notation is phi T, which is minus of RT inverse plus LT inverse. There is it's minus sign coming here. You see in the statement is minus sign. So I have put take this as put minus phi T, phi phi T to minus RT inverse, ST inverse. This is a linear map from BVW to BWV. Okay, we want to show that this minus VT is the derivative of eta at T. Okay, this is the same thing we are showing that now remember what is eta? T plus S inverse. See, eta taking the inverse minus t inverse. It is like f of t plus s minus f t, right? It's like that, that f is t plus s inverse minus t inverse plus this map phi t operating upon s, which is t inverse s t inverse. Phi t operating upon this one, that one. So there's a minus sign, so here I get a plus sign. Divide by the norm s s tends to 0 must be equal to 0. This limit must be 0. So this is what we have to show. Okay. Then the proof is over. Right. So first of all, t plus s can be written as identity plus s t inverse t. T, if you push it inside, see here now I have stopped writing composition. ST directly I am writing. Okay. So this is just for convenience. Everywhere composite, composite. I have already stopped writing compositions here. Here I wrote. Here when I am doing computation, I am now no, no longer. It's just like multiplication now. Okay. You must understand that these are compositions. That's all. So identity composite T plus S T inverse T inverse is S. So that is T plus S. Okay. So since we can choose norm S to be less than 1 by K. Okay. So that norm of S T inverse is less than 1. Then we have this identity plus S T inverse can be inverted. Identity plus S T inverse inverse will be nothing but 
zero to infinity minus minus one there is two n because there is a minus sign. Okay, if it's plus sign, everything will be plus here. If it's minus sign here, then everything will be plus here. If it's plus, this alternative will minus one minus one raised to n. S t inverse raised to n. This is geometric series, zero to infinity. Therefore, t plus s inverse minus t inverse plus t inverse s t inverse. I am computing this one. Okay, the t plus s inverse can be written as now. The t plus s was this one. Its inverse will be t inverse into identity plus s t inverse. I enter the last inverse is this summation, so I'm writing that t inverse into that summation minus t inverse plus t inverse s t inverse as it is. They are terms. Okay, so from here to here, what I have come, I have just used this t plus s inverse is this way. I have written inverse of that will be first t inverse, then inverse of this, but this is like this. This is a geometric series, so I have substituted here. Now look at the first term here. N equal to zero. So it's just t inverse. That comes cancels with this one. What is the first term here? N equal to one. What is this? S t inverse into t inverse on the left. So that is this term. So that also cancels out. That's a minus sign here with the first term. For zero term, this is plus sign. This is minus sign here. So those to cancel out. What you are left out is the summation from n equal to two onwards. Okay, so s t inverse raised to two comes out. So t inverse into s t inverse raised to two, then zero to infinity s t inverse. S t inverse powers s t inverse raised to n. So Up till here we have computed. Now what we have to do? We have to divide it by norm s, and then take the limit. When you take the norm of this part, the norm s comes here with a power twice, right? So one power cancels out when you divide by norm s. Other power norm s remains. Rest of the terms. Are any in a bounded function? They are, they are just some, some bounded functions. When you take the norm of the whole thing, right? Therefore, as norm s tends to zero, this will be zero. Okay, the claim follows. Only one norm s come in in the square term cancels out; the other one remains. The rest of them is bounded. S tends to zero, norm S tends to zero, so this is zero. Okay. So we have shown that eta is differentiable. From an earlier remark, it is continuous. I have already told you. I am repeating it. Okay. Eta is continuous. How to show that d eta is continuous? Now we have formula for d eta. Look at the formula. Formula says. D eta is got by t inverse phi t inverse. Sorry, minus t inverse on the left, t inverse on the right. Okay, so there is a minus sign doesn't matter. So is this continuous? And that's phi t inverse, right? T going t inverse is continuous. Multiplication is can be some continuous. Right hand side is continuous, and so on. This is what we are saying. Therefore, continuity of eta d eta also follows. Okay, continuity of d eta follows because of first of all eta is continuous and phi is continuous. Okay, the phi is what taking the left multiplication and right multiplication. Maybe take minus sign also, whatever. So all that I am heavily using one point five three here, right? This part I am using that L and 
R are continuous. L corresponds to left multiplication, R corresponds to right multiplication. Before that, you have to take inverse. T going to T inverse is continuous, also you have to that is That is the eta itself. Combining this, what we get is the derivative d eta is continuous at all the points and the whole of a. So here is a, an exercise. I am not going to use it in the in the course, but this is something which is very, very useful for people who do Lie, Lie groups and so on. So that's precisely what it is. Take any Banach space, let B will denote the space of all bounded linear operators from T to E. Okay, then this becomes a group of automata, obviously. Right? You can compose, you can take the inverse, and this is a group. What is more important is that this is a differentiable group or what you call as topological group. It's more than a topological group. Namely, the multiplication mu from BV cross BV to BV, the mu of ST equal to ST, this itself is done differentiable. Taking inverse is differentiable, we have seen. So that makes it to a, what is called as a differentiable group or what is called as Lie group, except that the word Lie group is used only for manifolds. This is what is called as a Banach manifold, okay, modeled on a Banach space. So if you want to study Banach Lie groups, this is the starting point. So I am giving you this an exercise. Show that mu is differentiable. Compute its derivative. Let GLV denote the open subspace BV consisting of all isomorphisms. They form a group, not this BV. Okay, along with our theorem above exercise implies that GLV is a Lie group modeled on Banach space. So that is just an exercise. The only thing is uh, you will see how to differentiate this one. Where is the derivative? I mean, where the derivative taking values? If you figure it out, then you will know how, what is the derivative. Okay. So thank you very much. That is all for today.